today I need to do some catch-up work. I need to get caught up on my housework that did not get done over the weekend uh, before I have to go back to work. So uh, the reason why I didn't get my work done is because instead of working on Saturday, we decided to go and, and have some fun. We went to a annual rendezvous that's at this time every year in September. Um, it's called the Trail of Courage Rendezvous. Now I took some footage of that. I'm not sure how much I have, but while you are enjoying the footage from the Trail of Courage Rendezvous, I'm gonna go get ready and then, or finish getting ready, I had my shower, finish getting ready, and then we're gonna get busy cleaning this house. The Trail of Courage Rendezvous has been in existence since 1976. Um, it was a project that was originally um, created to honor the Potawatomi Indians, who are uh, the original inhabitants of Northern Indiana. But in 1838, they were forcibly removed to Kansas, and it was known as the Trail of Death. I think it might be also known as the Trail of Tears. But um, they were removed to Kansas. So this was set up as kind of an honoring of the Indians that used to live in Indiana. Um, they did change the name to Trail of Courage, um, to focus on the life before they were removed. So it's a big festival. Like I said, it's been since 1976, and they have all kinds of reenactors there, uh, reenactors of the French and Indian War, Revolutionary War, War of 1812, um, fur trade. There's lots of uh, Plains Indians with teepees and all kinds of things. Um, they have actual Indian people of Indian heritage there reenacting, dressed up as Indians. Um, they have all kinds of food vendors there and things that are like cooked over fire, um, like beans and um, chicken and noodles and just all kinds of really fun stuff. And we've gone, the last time we went, the kids were pretty young and Olivia wanted to go this year and to be honest I wasn't real thrilled about going it was super hot that day uh, but I really did have a very good time and I'm really glad that we decided to go um, and it might become an annual event that we do every year from now on play some more. They had this Scottish band there. They were actually high school students and uh, you will see later on that I did take some video of their actual performance but I tried to find out whether I would get a copyright strike if I played their entire performance on here and I just cannot find out any information on whether or not I will get a copyright strike. So what I'm planning to do when I get to their performance, I am going to just p play like 10 seconds of their actual performance and then I'm going to have to put in, insert in video or I mean music from YouTube that's, that's not copyrighted. So I tried to find some Scottish like bagpipe music. There only was one selection and I don't even know how much bag bagpipes there will be, but I'm going to go ahead and use that video or that music for that part of the video. And then later on there's a Revolutionary War fife and drum uh, band that I uh, videoed and I'm going to be inserting some drum music that I found in place of their actual performance. Now I am going to do this video twice and I'm going to upload the original music on my Rumble channel. So if you want to hear the actual performance, go over to Rumble and watch it there as well. And there's a short version and a long version and what you'll see here uh, in this performance is the long version of the Highland Play. 
featuring our dancers and Denise's daughter, Ashley. This next selection of the um, Scottish band was their last performance, or the last song of their performance, and it was Amazing Grace. And so I videoed the entire thing because I really like that song, but yet again I'm going to go ahead and just play about 10 seconds of them, and then cut in with an Amazing Grace version that is um, okay for YouTube. I picked up a couple of things there at the rendezvous. One was this walking stick. Um, I've been needing a stick for walking when we go camping on hikes and stuff. And I really liked this. I'm not sure what wood it's made out of, but they did a really good job with the, I guess it's called turning. And they carve like spiral designs and things. 
I can't remember how much we paid for this. I think it was $15. It wasn't bad at all. It was like $15 or $20. It's got a nice, you know, tip on it. That's, um, can you see? Yeah. So like a slip proof tip on the bottom. And then this handle. I used it during, we bought this like one of the first things we bought when we first got there and I used it throughout the day and it really does help when you got bad knees or bad back it really does help and then I'll show you the next thing we got I only bought two things I got this dream catcher you saw it hanging at the booth on one of the, one of the pictures um, I looked at it when we first it was one of the first vendors as we got into the where the performances were being held like in the shaded part and I, th I saw it and I really liked it I liked it especially because of the crosses on it. And I didn't get it because it was $22. And I thought, oh my goodness, that's a bit much. But as we were leaving, I hadn't bought anything else. And I told my husband, I'm like, I'm going to go get that dream catcher. If I don't get it, I'm going to regret it. And I'm really glad I got it. Um, I'll show you where I have it hanging here in a minute. But it came with this card. And it tells what it's made out of. And I didn't realize, I thought it was all just like fake stuff, but no, this is actually real leather, brown leather wrap, um, brown and white ceramic beads, brown and white glass beads. So that's a combination of glass and ceramic beads there. Um, and here too. These must be the glass ones and I think these are the ceramic ones. Uh, fancy two color webbing, which I don't know what the webbing is made out of. Uh, four stone crosses, so those are made out of stone. And the thing, and then of course, it doesn't say what kind of feathers these are, but some kind of feathers and ribbon. And the thing that got me is that this is actually mink, blonde mink. So I thought that was, you know, that's really nice. And the construction of it is very well done. And it was actually created by an actual woman who has Native American heritage and I will put the I will put the spelling of it on the screen here because I cannot <laughs> do justice to trying to pronounce it, but it is um, in English. It means sparrow woman. So anyway, and then I'll tell you what the like Dreamcatcher legend is because I didn't really understand what Dreamcatchers were and why Indians I don't even Indians use them. I'm assuming they really did, but it was believed that the night sky brought all dreams. The Woodland Indians, and I'm reading off the card, uh, used dream catchers to keep the good ones. So they kept the good dreams, but they didn't want the bad dreams, obviously. The bad dreams were not wise and were caught in the web. So they were caught in the, in the webbing on it to stay with the dewdrops until the morning sun took them away. The good dreams were wise and found the hole in the middle. They found that hole in the middle and slid down the feathers and gently landed on the dreamer. So apparently they would hang this above wherever they sleep and that would what would bring them good dreams. So I'll show you where I have it hanging. I don't have it hanging in my bedroom. I didn't want to put it in there where no one would be able to see it. Uh, so let me show you where I have it hanging. It's kind of hard to see because it's by this window and it's always hard to film when there's light when you're backlit. But I have it hanging in my living room above um, my two double windows on the curtain rod. I just have it hanging up there. I have these Christmas lights up. I have them up all year long and I turn them on at night. I just haven't unplugged them yet this morning. But uh, it, I just really like it there. I think it looks really nice. This is as ready as I'm going to get for today. I don't have anywhere I have to go, and I just don't want to put on makeup. So I hope you don't mind that I don't have any makeup on. I really considered it, putting makeup on for this video, and I thought, that's just kind of stupid. You guys are my friends, and if you lived with me or were in my 
regular life and not through the internet, you'd see me without makeup. So here we go. This is real life. Uh, anyway, yeah, we had a great time on Saturday. I was so glad I told Olivia in the car on the way home. I'm so, I'm so glad you twisted our arm into going to this. <laughs> she didn't really have to twist too hard, but for me, it was just like, ugh. I didn't want to go anywhere. I knew I had a busy weekend ahead and I just got done working, you know, Monday to, or Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and like Saturday, I just wanted to stay home type of thing. But I'm so glad she talked us into going. So it was a really, really good time. It was a shame I couldn't put the actual music in that they played because those those kids especially the scottish band they did such a good job but i'm just so afraid of getting a copyright strike so like i said go to my rumble i will put a link for it in the description box below it's not going to be a complete redo of this video that you're watching right now it's just going to be the video footage from the rendezvous that i'm going to put on rumble because they don't have any of that silly copyright junk so if you want to hear the actual um, full performances of those songs go to rumble and check it out because I think you'll really enjoy it I really did so yeah I had a busy we, we did that on Saturday Sunday we went to church and then I went and we did our grocery pickup on Sunday and you will be seeing that video you won't be seeing that video this week. You'll be seeing that video next week just because of the way I've got so many video like ideas coming out that yeah, that's going to be next week, even though it'll be a week late and that food will probably all be eaten. I don't think you care. You guys like my, 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 uh, grocery hauls. My brain is not working today. I need another cup of coffee. <laughs> but anyway, so we did that Sunday because Monday, which was yesterday, I had to take my dad to a doctor's appointment. My older sister usually takes him to all of his doctor's appointments, but she couldn't this time, so I took him. And it was for an infusion, I don't understand it, but it was an infusion to help with his osteoporosis because he has osteoporosis. He has to go every six months and get this infusion. And the uh, appointment takes about an hour, and so I dropped him off. I didn't go in with him. I didn't have to. Um, I dropped him off, and then I went and did some errands. I had some running around to do. And then uh, just kind of on a whim, I thought, I'm going to stop in at Joanne Fabrics and just see if they have their fall stuff on clearance because they always clearance stuff out. And I usually only buy stuff from there if it's on clearance. And they did. So let me show you what I picked up. They're so cute. Look at these guys. A little mama and baby squirrel. They're so cute. Yeah, they had all of their fall um, natural fiber critters on sale, 50% off. I can't remember how much this guy was. I threw the tags away. But, oh my goodness, he's so cute. And I, I saw him, her, I think it's a her. I think it's a mama and a little baby. I saw her first, and then... Let me show you what else I picked up. I'm sitting over here, I'll explain what's going on with this in a minute. But look, Olivia and I are trying to figure out a name for her. We think she's a girl too because she's got flowers in her hair. And I'm gonna keep her out all year round because she's not necessarily fall. We're thinking maybe Fiona, excuse my garbage that's full, that's unsightly. <laughs> That trash can gets full so fast. Let me push it out of the view so you don't have to look at my garbage. Um, anyway, Olivia and I were thinking Fiona, but I had a duck named Fiona, and I don't know if I want to use that name again. So, I would love for you in the comment section below to put your choices. What do you, do you think she looks like? She's a little hedgehog. And she needs a name because she's just too cute to not have a name. She was also 50% off. And then look at this beauty. Look at this beauty. I have been wanting a natural fiber turkey for years. I've seen them at Hobby Lobby. Super expensive. And I just couldn't bring myself to buy them at Hobby Lobby because by the time they um, clearance their stuff down. 
this guy would be gone. So I saw him there and he was 50% off. I believe he was $50 originally. I do remember his price because I was like, Ugh. <laughs> but I thought, you know what? $50 is way too much, but 25 isn't too bad. So I picked him up and he's adorable and I haven't found a home for him yet. Have not found a home for little hedgehog yet. I do have a home for the squirrels, but I'm not gonna show you that because I am going to be doing a fall home decor tour, which will be coming out next week. But the reason why I haven't filmed it yet is the story behind my empty microwave cart. Last week, our microwave died. It got overheated and died. So, Sunday, when we were in town, we went over to Lowe's, Scott and I, and we picked out this microwave. And so we, it fits in this spot, and this is an actual microwave cart, and we've had this microwave cart since we moved into this house 20-something years ago. And we've had microwave in it, microwaves in it all this time, never a problem. So that was Sunday, I think Sunday night, yeah, Sunday night, Travis was making popcorn in it. And he doesn't just make one thing of popcorn. He'll make multiple things of popcorn because we don't use the bags that are already pre-portioned or whatever. We have like a microwave, microwavable popcorn popper. But he likes a giant bowl of popcorn and I keep trying to tell him he'd be better off just making it on the stove <laughs> instead of making it in the microwave five or six times. So anyway, in the process of making his popcorn, he overheated the brand new microwave and it quit working. It completely shut off. And I was freaking out. Scott was already in bed and I'm like, it's brand new, we just got it today. What in the world are we gonna do? I was totally freaking out. And it was hot, I mean, it was really hot hot to the touch. So we pulled it out, set it on the table, and let it cool off. And Olivia did some research online. Olivia did some research online about why a microwave would suddenly stop working and da 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 da. And she said sometimes they shut off when they get overheated as a protection measure so that they don't burn up and that they don't cause a fire in your house. So I'm like praying and crossing my fingers that that's what it was. I'm like, okay, we're gonna let that thing cool down. And it took a long time. It took like two hours for it to completely cool down. That's how hot it got. And so it finally cooled down. We plugged it in and it's like beep, beep, beep. And it came on and I'm like, oh, thank you, Lord. So we checked it, we you know set the clock, we, made you know did a test run in it and it works it didn't die it didn't get fried it just got overheated and shut off so apparently the problem is my microwave cart it is too boxed in the microwave fits in there just like like an inch clearance on either side and maybe an inch clearance at the top so then we get to reading the uh, manual, which Olivia had read, and she tried to tell us that this microwave cart wasn't gonna work because apparently this microwave that we got needs 12, in 12 inches of clearance on the top and so many inches on the side, and one side needs to be kept completely open. So <laughs> I had to buy a new microwave cart. It hasn't come in yet. And when it comes in, I'm gonna have to re, you know, decorate it. It's really nice. I'm gonna tell you what it looks like. You're gonna have to wait and see. But it's a really nice, like a baker's rack type microwave cart. Yeah. So anyway, in the meantime, we had to take my air fryer off of here and put it on the floor in the other room, put the microwave here and um, hopefully that microwave, the new Baker's Rec microwave cart will come within a few days and we'll get that up and then I can get my house back to order, back in order the way it's supposed to be. And then I will film my fall decor tour. So I'm hoping that that video will be out next week as well. So enough chitter chat. What is that? Is that a word? Chitter chat? <laughs> 
whatever. Enough talking. Let's get busy. I'm gonna make myself something to drink and then we are gonna get this house whipped into shape really quick. this video because I've been kind of editing as I've been going along and this video is going to be long enough but I wanted to include this I was at my dad's the other day and he gave me this apparently when his parents passed away this was passed on to him <clears throat> and he knows I like vintage things and especially like family history things so he asked me if I wanted it and I'm like oh yeah absolutely I want it this Carl George is my great grandfather so that is my dad's grandpa my dad's dad's dad <laughs> and he was a farmer and in let's see what year was it 1936 he decided he didn't want to be a farmer anymore so he sold everything and bought a home in town and this was the flyer announcing the public sale and it shows what he was selling two head of horses smooth mouth I don't know what that means mare and gelding full brother and sister good workers six head of cow oh Guernsey and Jersey cows giving four gallons daily purebred Jersey Gives four gal gallons daily. Yeah. Eight year Jersey cow giving two gallons. 19 head of hogs. Implements. Chickens. Bard Rock chickens. And terms? Cash. <laughs> cash only. Which was the big deal in 1936. So anyway, I don't know if this had anything to do with the Great Depression, if that's why he sold it off, or if he was just tired of farming, I don't really know. But I just thought that was awesome. This so, I love this kind of stuff, especially family history. 
So I'm going to frame this and I'm going to put it down in my vintage room. And so yeah, I will show you how I do that. And my Aunt Janice watches my videos and she's my dad's sister. So I think this will tickle her that I ended up getting this and then I'm going to preserve it. This is the frame I'm going to use. This one I just had downstairs and then I'm going to use some scrapbooking paper that is um, acid free because I want to preserve this. I don't want it to anything bad to happen to it. So I'm going to go ahead. It's going to be simple. I'm just going to cut like a, a um, frame and then put this around it. Put this on it and put it in the frame. Not a frame. What do you call it? A mat I guess or border around it. So that was a really simple way to preserve it, but now it's preserved and I'm going to take it downstairs and hang it in my vintage room and then I will show you where I hung it and we will wrap up this video. Before I wrap up this video, I wanted to just show you my nails. You can see those very well. I don't know. Thank you again, Kelly. I've been really enjoying these uh, nails you sent us. So much fun. I decided to hang it next to my grandfather's um, stock cattle sign. Howard George is my dad's dad. So that's my grandpa. And then, and sons would be my Uncle David and my dad. And then here is my great grandfather's public sale notice, which would be my, be Howard's father. Howard's father, Carl. So maybe, maybe sometime I will get some more memorabilia from my dad's side of the family that I can hang on that wall over there. But I just felt like it was fitting to be next to the livestock hauling sign. Hope you enjoy seeing the Aunt Jan. All right, friends, that's where I'm going to wrap this video up for today. It is definitely long enough. I hope you enjoyed coming along with us as we went to the rendezvous and all of the fun things that's happened in, since the last time I did A Day in the Life. Thanks so much for watching, friends. Don't forget to leave your suggestions for that little hedgehog, a name for her, in the comment section below. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up, and we will talk to you guys later. Bye, friends. Thank <laughs> you.